Hi, in this video I'm going to go through the electricity set to questions. In total we have about 29 marks to get through so it shouldn't take you much longer than uh, half an hour or so. But let's see how quickly we can get through this. You should only watch this video after attempting the questions yourself and you can use this along with the mark scheme to identify areas you need to work on. So, question one. A student investigates how the resistance of a thermistor varies with temperature. The student sets up the circuit shown in figure 5 to measure current and voltage. He finds that the circuit doesn't work. He finds that it doesn't work. Give three modifications the student should make to the circuit so that the circuit works correctly. So immediately as I see the circuit, I notice that this cell is the wrong way round. Note that in this case, the cell should be like this. Both cells in a battery should be facing the same way. Remember, you've got a positive and negative pole, and if it was the other way around, it would be working against each other. I also notice that the voltmeter is connected in series, and the ammeter is connected in parallel. That should be the other way around. So this here should be an ammeter so that it can measure the current flowing through it. Remember, ammeters measure current flow, and now it can measure the current flowing through it. And the voltmeter is always placed in parallel. It's called parallel because these wires here are parallel to this one here. So let's write that down. And that's it. Let's try the next one. The student uses the equipment shown in figure 6 to measure the temperature of the thermistor. So now we're measuring the temperature of our device, of our thermistor. Give one reason for using a water bath. So when we heat something up, we often use a water bath, a sand bath, or an oil bath. And the reason for this is because it's easy to control the temperature of a water, oil, or sand bath, especially compared to when heating something in air. So, the equipment shown in figure 6 is for investigations in the temperature range from 20 degrees to 100 degrees. State one way, one way, the student could develop this experimental procedure to investigate temperatures outside this range. So if we look at the temperature range from 20 to 100, that falls within a very specific range. 100 degrees is the point at which water boils. And 20 degrees is roughly room temperature. So if we want to investigate temperatures outside this range, so temperatures below 20 degrees and temperatures above 100 degrees, there are two things we could do. The first is that we could use an ice bath or add ice to investigate temperatures below this range. And just writing that would get you that mark. Alternatively, you could use a different liquid such as maybe some kind of oil with a higher boiling point um, to investigate higher temperatures. But just writing one of these would be enough. The student takes measurements for, other, for two other components, A and B. The results of both of these components are shown in figure 7, so we have resistance on the y-axis and temperature on the x-axis in both cases. Compare and contrast how the resistances of component A and component B vary with temperature. So we can see that for component A, as temperature increases, the resistance decreases. For component B, we can see that as temperature increases, resistance increases, as we can see here. But it's not a 
directly proportional or linear relationship. So it's most effective to refer to the data in this case. In this case, two numbers stand out. We can see that after 60 degrees in component A, the temperature levels off. And we see something similar in component B. At 60 degrees again, temperature starts to, um, the resistance starts to climb. So we see that in component A, at 60 degrees, the change in resistance is far smaller. And in component B, after 60 degrees, the change in resistance is far greater than at lower temperatures. So in component A, the resistance decreases as temperature increases up until 80 degrees. At this point, the change in resistance is barely notice noticeable. However, in component B, the increasing temperature has no effect on resistance until 60 degrees, where it starts to rapidly increase. Next, component A is connected to a 12 volt supply. Which of these is the current in component A when the temperature is 80 degrees? So remember, we have voltage and we have temperature, and we need to find current. And this is for component A. So in component A, at 80 degrees, we have a resistance of 5,000 ohms. So we know our resistance is 5,000 ohms. Our voltage, as it told us in the question, is 12 volts. And now we need to find our current. We're going to use the equation V equals I times R. We're going to substitute into our equation. So 12 divided by 5,000 is equal to I. And our current is equal to... And our current is given in the form of the equation. So we can see that our answer is V. Let's move on to the next question. Question two. Figure 23 shows an electric car connected to a battery charger. The car has a rechargeable battery to drive its motor. The rechargeable battery provides a potential difference of 330 volts and can store up to 64 megajoules. So we have voltage and we have energy. It takes eight hours for the battery to receive a full charge, and that's time. Assume that the charging process is 100% efficient. Calculate the total charge that flows when the battery is being charged. So in this case, we are going to use the equation voltage is energy divided by charge. So voltage is known as the energy per coulomb or joules per coulomb. And remember, coulomb is the unit of charge. So just how joules is the unit of energy, coulombs is the unit of charge. Now let's substitute into our equation. Our voltage is 330 volts. Our energy is 64 megajoules. And our charge is unknown. That's what we need to calculate. Now it's three marks. And the reason it's three marks is because we need to go from 64 megajoules to two joules. And mega stands for one million or times 10 to the power of six. Remember, it's important not to get confused with milli, which is times 10 to the minus three. Mega is a capital M or a uppercase M and milli is a lowercase M. So 330 volts is equal to 64 times 10 to the power of 6 joules divided by Q. So now we can find that our charge is equal to 64 times 10 to the power of 6 divided by 330. And from this we can find that our charge is 190,000 coulombs. 
Next, we need to calculate the average charge and current. Now, the equation for current is... Now, the definition of current is the rate of flow of charge. So, essentially, it's how much charge flows each second. So, our equation is I equals Q divided by T. Now, let's again substitute into our equation. Our I is unknown. Q is 190,000. And T is 8 hours. Once again, this question is 3 marks. And that's because we need to co convert from 8 hours into seconds. Now we know that to go from 8 hours to minutes, we'd need to multiply by 60 because we have 60 minutes in 1 hour. But then to go to seconds, we need to multiply by 60 again because there's 60 seconds in 1 minute. So that's all we need to do. It's 190,000. 8 times 60 times 60, or essentially 8 times 3,600. When we put this into our calculator, we'll get an answer of 6.6 .6 amps. So this question can't be answered at the moment because we haven't learned topic 13. And in topic 13, we'll, under we'll learn how 230 volts can be converted into 335 volts. So let's leave this for now. Question 3. A plastic rod and a piece of cloth are both uncharged. The student rubs the plastic rod with the cloth and the rod becomes negatively charged. Compared with the plastic rod, which row of the table is correct for the charge on the cloth? So, we know that the plastic rod becomes negatively charged and something becomes negatively charged if it gains gains electrons. And these electrons would have been gained from the cloth. So, put a cross in the box next to your answer. If electrons have been transferred from the cloth to the plastic rod, we know that the cloth is now positive. So we know the answers B and D are incorrect because it says negative here. And if five rods have been transferred from the cloth to the rod, the size of the charge would be equal. So our answer is A. Now we need to explain how the plastic rod becomes negatively charged. So due to the friction so due to the friction between the rod and the cloth negatively charged electrons are transferred from the cloth uh, from the cloth to the rod this results in an overall negative charge so you get one mark for mentioning the negatively charged electrons and you'd get another mark for mentioning the transfer from the cloth to the rod. Next, the student holds the plastic rod near a stream of water coming from a tap. The stream of water bends towards the plastic rod. Which picture shows the correct arrangement of charges in the stream of water? Put a cross in the box next to your answer. So we can see that the charges in the rod are negative. And as we know, negative and negative repel. From that, we can see that this answer would be incorrect, this answer would be incorrect, and so would this, as the stream of ro uh, water would be pushed away rather than attracted to the rod. Therefore, we can see that B is correct, because we have positive charges attracted to the negative charges on the rod. The student puts the plastic rod into the stream of water and pulls it out. Now when he holds a plastic rod near the stream of water, the water doesn't bend. Suggest why the stream of water doesn't bend. So if it isn't attracted to the rod, that means the rod is no longer charged. The rod can no longer induce a charge on this stream of water.
And finally, a torch has a battery and a bulb. The current in the circuit is 0.08 amps. Calculate the amount of charge passing a point in the circuit in two minutes. So we need to find charge, we have current, and we have time. Let's use the equation I equals Q divided by T. Remember, current is the rate of flow of charge. So how much charge flows in a certain amount of time? Our charge is unknown. Our current is 0 0.08 amps. And our time is two minutes. Now, this question is three marks because we need to convert from minutes to seconds. And as we know, two minutes is 120 seconds. Now let's solve this. And when we put this in our calculator, we get an answer of 9.6 coulombs. And that's it. I hope you found this useful. If you have any questions, please do ask.